Hey everybody, Riley here with Dark Arrow. Today's video is all about 3D printing and the 3D printed parts in the Dark Arrow 1. If you've been following along, you've probably seen that we use a bunch of different tools to build the Dark Arrow 1 prototype, and 3D printing is one of them. Also known as additive manufacturing, 3D printing is a great tool to use if you know how to apply it. In this video, we're gonna talk through some good applications for 3D printed parts, as well as some not so good applications. And we're gonna demonstrate with specific examples in the Dark Air One prototype. At the end of the video, we're gonna talk through a couple planned future 3D printed parts that we're working on. Let's get into it. Let's start off with a general definition for 3D printing or additive manufacturing. The general premise is that you're building up a part to near net shape, usually layer by layer, by adding material rather than subtracting material the way you would in say CNC machining. There are a bunch of different processes that exist to achieve this, and there's a bunch of materials that you can use as well. They could be plastics, metal, even concrete. For our purposes, and what we're gonna be discussing in this video is primarily plastics since they're most useful for us in the Dark Arrow 1. 3D printing is well suited for parts that are typically non-structural, have a complicated shape, have looser dimensional tolerances, and are low production volume or prototype parts. 3D printing is not as well suited for parts that are structural, have tight dimensional tolerances, are large in size or volume, or parts that need to be mass produced in large quantities. I'll add in the disclaimer that these advantages and disadvantages that I listed out are general statements. Additive manufacturing is a really broad field, so obviously there are exceptions to these rules, but in general, these guidelines are true. Let's look at some specific examples of 3D printed parts, and I think this will all make more sense. We'll head over to the workbench and I'll hand it off to Keegan to talk through the first example. The first print I have for you guys is this little mold. It's actually two halves. It comes apart like this, and it's used for making these little tube connectors for connecting carbon fiber tubes. And uh, I can show them a little bit better here. So as Riley mentioned at the beginning of the video, there's a lot of different printing processes. I'll go into a little bit about how this one was made. It was made using a process called fused deposition modeling or FDM. I think it's a process that most people are familiar with. Use a spool of filament and that spool goes into a heated nozzle and then it squirts out the material into your 3D printed part. The nice thing about this process is that you get a quick turnaround time and it's pretty inexpensive. The downside to it is that the resolution isn't as fine, and as you scale up part size, the tolerances start to stack up pretty quickly. So it's great for a quick turnaround, inexpensive parts, making little prototype connectors like this, but not as good for higher resolution, more detailed prints like a mold for the entire wing. So that's one example of a 3D printed component. Let's get to some more exciting ones though. Oh, all right. Our next one here is a little bit more exciting. This is actually a 112 scale model of the Dark Arrow 1 itself. This was 3D printed using a process called SLA or stereolithography. Basically with that process, you've got a bed of resin and a laser. The laser shines itself layer by layer, curing the resin. You can start from top to bottom until you have your entire model. So this is a wind tunnel model, uh, but the nice thing about SLA is that you get finer print resolution and it's a more robust type of material for the application of say wind tunnel testing. So that is another example of a 3D printed part and a 3D printing process. This is the first part we'll show you that's actually installed on the aircraft. This is a submerged inlet for the cabin fresh air vents. You can actually see it on the side of the aircraft right here. So this part was made with a process called continuous digital light processing. They actually take a, a movie of your part basically spliced up into layers and then project that onto the bottom of a vat of resin. This was made on a carbon printer. It's not made out of carbon fiber. That's just a brand of printer. Um, it's made with their carbons EPX 82 resin and a cool component about that resin is we can actually bond to surfaces. So, a lot of 3D printed plastics, if you try and bond them somewhere, they might delaminate. But Carbon's EPX82 is good for bonding. So that's why we chose EPX82 to use for our inlet application. Circling back to the start of the video where Riley was talking about the good applications for 3D printing, this part is actually a pretty good application for 3D printing as 
It's pretty small and has a lot of complex geometry. If we were to mold this part, it would likely take multiple molds that would then have to be assembled later to get our finished part. 3D printing, however, this can be done in, in one print. It should be noted, however, that 3D printing isn't just hit go and here's your part. There is a little bit of post print labor involved, such as breaking off supports, cleaning off excess resin, and then a lot of the resins you do need to cure afterwards with UV light or other processes. For the most part, this is good for 3D printing because the molding process would take a lot more time and effort. We're looking at the final example of 3D printing on the Dark Era 1 here with these cooling ducts in black and this cooling duct here in gray. These cooling ducts were manufactured using a process known as SLS or Selective Laser Sintering. SLS, in a nutshell, is a process that uses a powder bed that is hardened layer by layer using a laser to create your part. These parts are made from nylon, which is ideal for areas of high vibration, high heat, so basically the engine. So as you can see from the geometries of these parts, they would be pretty difficult to manufacture using our traditional molding process like we do with everything else on the plane. They'd also be pretty hard to make using a subtractive process. So 3D printing really shines in this application for the cooling ducts on the engine. We talked about a bunch of 3D printed parts that are on the airplane. Here's a couple trial parts that we tested uh, 3D printing, but they didn't make the cut to go on the aircraft yet. So this is a bell crank that goes on the rudder control system. This is our current unit and it's uh, made from a billet machine section of carbon fiber. We've also experimented with uh, Carbon 3D's EPX82 resin printing a bell crank. And we also have the same version of that that is uh, co-cured with pre-preg carbon fiber to stiffen it up a little bit. We've also experimented with Mark Forge Onyx filament. We've got two bell cranks here. One is made with their onyx filament with uh, continuous carbon fiber to reinforce it. And then the other one is just straight onyx filament. We've been running some testing on these, trying to figure out if there's any advantage uh, going with a 3D printed version. But for now, we're sticking with the billet machine bell crank. That's a high level overview of the different 3D printed parts in the Dark Arrow 1. There are a couple more 3D printed parts we're thinking about making. One of those would be custom 3D printed control stick grips for the cabin, as well as 3D printed heat ducts that will carry hot air between the pilot and co-pilot in the cabin. But we're gonna save those for a future video, so stay tuned for that. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.